Hello there friends, welcome back to my channel. So today I decided that I would do some lesser known books that I haven't seen on booktube or really bookish social media in general and I would just give a spotlight on them and just chat about them and maybe you'll discover a book that you know you haven't read yet. Speaking of books that I haven't read yet, um, I wanted to give a spotlight on actually this author. His name is Ron Rash and he teaches writing over in North Carolina. So he, this is his most latest novel, this is The Risen, and this is about two brothers, <laughs> and this is about two brothers that uh, fall in love with the same woman and then the girl disappears and then like, you know, they were in their what, teens, early 20s or whatever and then it fast forwards to when they're adults and um, the younger brother thinks that maybe his older brother might have done something. So it's just dealing with that. It's not very long. Um, I have not read Ron Rash, which is a big shame because he writes about uh, people who live in Appalachia, uh, North Carolina area, and if you didn't know, the Appalachian Mountains is a vertical mountain range that goes through uh, the eastern United States, and it covers both the north and the south, so there's a lot of uh, interesting intersections when it hits different places, and I'm actually working on a video about uh, that region because I grew up in Appalachia so I am very interested. So uh, later date when I get it together I'm working on titles and things right now so yeah stay tuned but definitely check out Ron Rash. Uh, another book uh, that I haven't read yet that is up on my TBR is by Harrison Scott Key. This is The World's Largest Man, a memoir and Harrison Scott Key uh, teaches at SCAD, uh, uh, Savannah College of Art and Design and he is hilarious. He is, I think now he's a contributing editor uh, at the Oxford American. Um, he writes about Southern living and it's just super funny. Um, he is hilarious. So yeah, I am really excited to read this book and um, if you haven't heard of him, you definitely should check him out. Uh, doing some middle reader now. Uh, one is The Secret Voice of Gina Zhang. I'm not sure if I've talked about this book on my channel yet. I, I should have. Uh, this is actually an American Girl novel when they used to do those. I think this is out of print. But this is about uh, Gina who has moved to the United States with her family and she gets this disorder kind of thing where she can't speak outside of her household and she can't really communicate. And I don't remember what that disorder is called. Um, she speaks Chinese at home. Uh, she finds that she can speak English when she's playing with her toys and telling stories and I never heard of this disorder before as a girl and also this is one of the first books where I realized uh, the odds and how much racism that people face when they immigrate um, to the United States and just how people think because you don't understand their language that you know they think you're stupid and I got really mad when I read this book but I really love it and I, I don't know why it's not on more lists somewhere so. Next is Gregor the Overlander by Suzanne Collins. Yes that is the author of The Hunger Games. Uh, this is about Gregor who falls into the underland and rats and bats and insects are all like the size of small horses like they're huge like you ride bats and so one of their sayings is fly high overlander anyway i think it's adorable and uh fair warning though this is upper middle grade because there's a lot of violence so just fyi i mean Suzanne collins she wrote the hunger games no surprise but i really enjoyed this series i thought it was kind of unique and also uh they use the word light and life interchangeably because light means life when you live in a giant like cave like world and anyway I thought it was interesting and I think more people should be talking about this book so that is how it made this list. Uh, next is When You Reach Me by Rebecca Stead and this one the Newberry and people are talking about it but for some reason they're not talking about it on YouTube or social media really that I have seen and I know like it's kind of past when this came out. Rebecca Stead is one of my favorite middle reader uh, authors. I think she is fantastic. Uh, this is uh, about a girl who keeps getting these notes in New York and she doesn't know what's going on and then there's some fantastical stuff going on and I'm afraid to say much because I was kind of blown away by the ending and I had no idea going into this what this was about so I'm gonna leave that with you so you can go check it out and feel the same way but this book is just gorgeous and deserves it deserves that new berry, let me tell you. Next up is Nightwood by Juna Barnes, and this one in particular is prefaced by Jeanette Winterson. Um, 
This book, guys, so I'm going to say that I was the only person in my class that really liked this book at all. Most people don't like this book because it's not very accessible and it's really weird and you don't really know what's going on much at all. And the only reason I like this book, I would have to say, is because I'd already read her biography, which I will put here. And um, it, that Juno was a very interesting person and she so wrote this book about the love of her life who was a woman. So you, a lot of people say that this is an early work of lesbian fiction and if you define that as just the love between two women then okay. But see the thing was is that Duna wasn't a lesbian. Um, she actually uh, refused to let people define her sexuality. She really got mad at people when they did that. Um, she actually had uh, most of her relationships were with men and I think they had like open relationships. She didn't seem, she's very much free love kind of idea and she believed that sexuality was completely fluid and just couldn't be defined and it was always shifting and moving and it was interesting because she lived to be a very old woman like she's 80s 90s like it was insane and so you'd have these young LGBT plus people like coming in and interviewing her like what was it like to be a lesbian and you know meet James Joyce and all this stuff and she would be like I am not a lesbian quit trying to define my sexuality and she would get so mad at them and I think if we were to give her a label, we're not going to because she would hate that, but we would probably say she was pansexual, which if you don't know is a non-binary uh, sexuality and it basically means you love all genders of all people, of all, you love everyone. That's basically it. But I do think it's interesting how this is a instance of what we could call pan erasure of people refusing to acknowledge or um, let her ha define her own sexuality. So. I think she's really interesting as a person. You might think she's kind of crazy because she kind of is. She did a lot of weird things, but you know, I think she's interesting. And if you're interested in reading, uh, you know, history of LGBT plus literature, or you want to learn more about her, then I would definitely recommend her biography, the book. Interesting. But I think if you don't really know her history, then it's going to be a bit confusing, but whatever. You know what? go discover for yourself and find Nightwood and you can have your own opinions about it and that is cool but for some reason not many people learn about this and I didn't learn about it until like it even existed until like my last year of grad school so anyway thank you Dr. McNeely. Last book is Mama Day by Gloria Naylor. This novel is just fantastic you know I don't even remember if I've talked about it on this channel yet I try to talk about it everywhere. So anyway, we're going to talk about it again. So this is about Coco who lives on a non-existent island in real life of a place between Georgia and South Carolina. She lives on like the border, whatever. So it is an island of a community of African Americans and they live by themselves throughout history. And so there's a lot of like medicine woman kind of magical realism stuff going on. You're never sure what's real and what's not, which is just a fantastic way to go. And Coco is of the heritage of this long line of um, like magicalish women who lived on the island and they were slaves. And then once they were freed, the slaves took over the island. And that was like the history that um, Gloria Naylor came up with the island. Um, and so Coco eventually does leave the island, she goes to New York, and you get to see a lot of parallels between city life and their diversity and the diversity of the island uh, that Coco grew up on. And then she brings, she meets this guy, they get married, and she brings him home, and a lot of stuff happens. And guys, this ending, I've got to tell you, you will have never read an ending like this ending. You have just, what, what, what the junk is going on? And it is amazing. It is amazing. It is beautiful. This book really changed my perspective on literature and how wonderful it could be. And it stands up to rereadings. And um, for some reason, I just haven't heard a lot of people talk about it. I've seen the one of Brewster Place. I think Rincey Reads was reading it. Um, and I think Gloria Naylor sets all of her fiction in the same like universe so they can have like cameos and stuff. But yeah, this book is glorious and you should definitely check it out if you haven't read it. It is like, I feel like this is Jasmine Ward's like literary grandmother. Like you can see the influences of the magical realism, especially in Jasmine Ward's newest book, Sing Unburied Sing, but I digress. We'll talk about that later. Go to when it comes out because I love it so much. So that is all 
of the books that I want to talk about today that I just had seen and want to talk about because, you know, any excuse to talk about books I love, books I want to read, whatever. I'm going to go rescue this box that Dylan is currently destroying. And uh, good luck to you in your March Madness bracket if you do that. My family does. We have a contest and whoever wins gets a t-shirt. So, of their chosen team. Which usually is, you know, UK, University of Kentucky. Samuel kind of throws it in the mix. He's rooting for UCLA. And funnily enough, Samuel's aunt sent Dylan a t-shirt because he only had a Kentucky t-shirt. She said he needed a UCLA t-shirt. So, anyway, uh, that's all for me. I guess I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye.